Na hit obviously stay at Manchester United confirmed to by Ineos after the uh, end of season review he has come out and said all right I've gone ahead to understand that you've gone ahead obviously give me a huge goal to obviously go and really get him this job but I have my conditions that I've gone ahead to say it and you people have to dance to them him and looks like right now he is in the position of strength ever since he went ahead to obviously win what we call the FA Cup and he was in Ibiza resting and guess what everything really found him there and they really went ahead obviously find themselves into position of really knowing that Eric Ten Hag is the man to obviously take Man United to where the club of United really deserves to be. Smash like button, comment and share. If you're totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rock and David is my name and it has been a very 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 busy day on the side of Manchester United. We are having very many stories really coming in through as expected that no sooner Eric Ten Hag would be announced as the permanent manager for the club of Manchester United. We all anticipated that it's really going to start charging in, like throwing in stories after stories as far as Eric Ten Hag is really concerned. And I tell you what, Eric Ten Hag looks to be one of the men that are really very, 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 very important. And he is really taking his time and he's really a no-nonsense man and i like him about that that amidst all that has going to happen in the media a lot of talks and confirmation to him that united is talking to other agents he was like no way i'm not gonna change my stance and he kept his ground until now eric ten hag is keeping his ground on who he wants to be working with at the club of Manchester united and what should be the um what should be the conditions on who decides which player comes in through and which player not to come in through so let's see close to 300 likes much in this video don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as don't miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily rock and david is my name and hope you guys are really having fun the muslims baraklaw fikum and continue to subscribe because we want to hit 20,000 subscribers that's the mark and let's continue to subscribe now um this is uh <clears throat> lori whitwell obviously from the athletic told us that a delegation headed by sir dev Bresfold fled to meet ten hag in ibiza to talk things through properly and attempt to maintain mutual respect in a relationship that had become severely tested due to Ineos giving serious thought to making a change now obviously eric ten hag was like i'm in ibiza chilling i went ahead and told you that eric ten hag was in ibiza and these uh, people of Ineos headed by Dev Bresfold had to obviously fly to Ibiza to obviously find Eric Ten Hag there because it's them that are gonna have to make the relationship toxic in between him and the people and it's said that after the loss <coughs> to Crystal Palace uh, four nil uh, one nil to Arsenal and that uh, three three dramatic draw at Wembley, semi-finals of the FA Cup that we later win on penalties, Ineos, Ineos got Eric Ten Hag out of the discussions, meaning that ever since January to the start of May, they were like, we are including Eric Ten Hag in each and everything they're really discussing, you understand? And it shows you that they're really incompetent. How can you turn around a manager in just a space of two three weeks you know that is the incompetency of Ineos and it shows you exactly what they are doing at Nice you know and I tell you if it were not the fans of Manchester United Eric Ten Hag was supposed to be shown the exit door after the FA Cup final that is it like Jacob Steinberg would hate to say and I know he got it from a credible source but the fans stood the ground and I tell you what the Glazers have never gone ahead to see this when fans of United are fighting for manager not to be sacked, they wanted Moyes to be sacked. They wanted um, the majority, the vast majority wanted uh, Louis Van Hal to be sacked. Though for me, I never wanted Louis Van Hal to be sacked. They wanted Mourinho to be sacked. They wanted Oliguna to be sacked, to be sacked. And as it has always gone here to be, that at the end of the second season, 
of the manager or the start of the third season of the manager he gets a sack the glazers were like maybe the fans will be behind us <clears throat> but even before we played the fa cup finale the fans were like even if we lose the fa cup finale ten hag is not gonna be sacked you get and they read the room very well and they had nothing to do because the pressure from the fans was really huge and the fans were obviously singing one song that every ten hag is the open goal that we are supposed to keep to take us to where we deserve to be and congratulations to everyone that has been standing with eric ten hag and i know most some of you have been have been shifting goal posts on this channel i know that very well but the vast majority of this channel i've always gonna hate obviously say eric ten hag should stay in as a manager of manchester united and i tell you this is not in yours and what they've gonna hate to do to succumb to the pressure of the fans has gonna hate to really make a very huge statement that there is nothing they are gonna make as a decision when the fans are not in line with it and that is it especially on eric ten hag and i tell you eric ten hag looks like he's gonna be the second most favorite manager to the fans of Manchester united after salex ferguson because the way the fans have fought for him has been really amazing and you can really <clears throat> Remi, remina, re, reminiscence. I think it's reminiscence. The, spe, the speech that Eric Ten Hag made when he played our last game at Old Trafford against Newcastle that he won by three goals to one. He was like, these fans have been really good and they've been really supportive and here we come to go to Wembley and these players won't really let you down. <clears throat> they'll fight and they'll bring the trophy and the fans will always hear that speech echoing into their minds because Eric Ten Hag for two consecutive seasons he has managed to obviously deliver a trophy for the club of Manchester United. Now let's obviously uh, get into this. This is Jason Bart, chief football correspondent for the Telegraph. He has told us that Eric Ten Hag is now expected to sign a two new year contract extension. His current contract ends on June 30th 2025 meaning he will have three years remaining. Right? So that he is Eric Ten Hag for you. That at the moment he obviously goes out, obviously do the needful with his contract and accepts it to put pen to paper, he's going to be having three years left on his contract. And remember, <clears throat> his contract was ending next year and he had just an additional further one year. And as I told you in the first video I did today that if you want Eric Ten Hag to obviously see to it that he attracts players and convinces them to start the club of Manchester United, you need to give him a new contract that is it because if he's having money on his contract he won't really convince a player to come in through but if he if he puts spend to paper on a three-year contract then all will be great and for those three years anticipate that in the third year that you're going into i'm gonna really make a prediction that you guys are really gonna call me mad i'm first gonna look at <coughs> the summer transfer window and if that summer transfer window goes on as to plan Ten Hag is going to be among the teams that are going to be competing for the Premier League title. I repeat this. I repeat this. Eric Ten Hag is going to be among those teams competing for the Premier League title. If at all, we get in decent, one or two decent setter backs, a CDM, a striker, a right back, you understand? If we get in like four players, for example, if we add a Todibo into that central defense, bring in a frimpong to play as the right back to compete with diego dalo get in uh for fana all ederson from atalanta all yao neves name it any decent cdm in the club of manchester united keep amrabat you know and the center forward the man united will be good to go and if i told the manager really gets in uh a CDM for me by the way the first player I would love us to sign is a CDM. I would like to see to it that we get in Amrabat and then another player. Then let Casemiro go and see how things are really going to pan out. So, <clears throat> Ten Hag's third year is really going to be very fruitful for the club of Manchester United because when you look at the progress of Eric Ten Hag <coughs> in his first two seasons, it has been better than that of Mikel Arteta. And remember for Mikel Arteta, it was in his third full season that he went ahead to compete with the trophy with man city and i see no difference with Manchester united we have all what it takes to collect 90 points next season last season we collected 60 meaning that 
we were 30 less not so and for any team that can collect 85 points they are always into a title race that is it meaning that if we really <coughs> keep the wins we've gone ahead to keep <coughs> and really reduce the 13 the 13 losses were they 14 i think 14 losses to 10 not we reduce the losses to three and we add on 10 wins that takes us exactly into 90 points and what should we do what should we be doing next season we shouldn't allow any team to come at old trafford and collect even two points you know we shouldn't allow it we've shown it that we can beat man city we can beat arsenal we can beat liverpool we can beat chelsea we can beat whoever comes in through at old trafford so what we have to do is let's make it a killer ground let it be a fortress like it was when eric ten Hag came in through in his first season if out of the 18 games that you're going to be playing at the old trafford we can win 14 and draw three those are 52 points plus three those are 55 from old trafford you get and <coughs> if we go away from home teams like spurs Aston Villa, you know, the teams that are can allow to lose at their side, Arsenal, um, Man City, Liverpool, because they are hard places to go, but I know we can really just win. But let's take off like five games away from home, you know, five games away from home. Or let us take six, you know, we go away from home and we win uh, 13 games. Those are like 40 points. So 40 plus 50 that we've collected, the 56 we've gone ahead to collect. Is it 55 that we've gone ahead to collect at Old Trafford? That is 94 points plus. You win the trophy. So, if we happen to achieve that, then that is really going to be important. And that will depend on how the players are really going to be available. Because if Eric Ten Hag is going to be having his players available, then nothing is going to stop him from obviously getting to where he deserves to be as a manager of Manchester United. So, we are here to obviously see how Eric Ten Hag really is going to have to say it hard conditions to put pen to paper and this is Paul Hurst. he's a reporter for Manchester United or correspondent for Man United at the Times has said Eric Ten Hag and his advisors are expected to take a bullish approach to contract negotiations with Ineos. Ten Hag will not blindly accept what is put in front of him and wants to feel empowered and not to be a lame duck manager obviously if you're Eric Ten Hag, you wouldn't like to be a lame duck manager, you know? <laughs> You'd like to be a manager with veto power and decisions on the players are really going to be coming in through. But you have to be sitting together to obviously come up with what we call the ultimatum decision. So, Ten Hag really wants that power. And those are some of the conditions Ten Hag has gone ahead obviously put up. He added and said so. He wants his signings to be made that improve the squad. He wants them to be through the door before United begin their preseason in the United States on 24th July. Now, I think we cannot get in all these transfers done by 24th, but I know by 24th July, Man United would have gone ahead to bring in like two, and I know it will be either out of those three players, if Man United gets back into the Olise race, it, had, it will be Olise all Todibo, all Amrabat. One of those will be here. <clears throat> Out two of those will be here at the club of Manchester United. A CDM and a central defender. All Olise and a CDM. All Olise and a central defender. So <clears throat> by 24th, I expect like two players to be in the squad of Manchester United. And then later we'll see the rest as it really goes on in here onto the side of the United Matters channel. Now, then Ten Hag is reluctant to cede power to Ineos when it comes to transfers. I like that. That is my manager. And that's the one I'm going to hate to love to obviously be doing proper, proper, proper things at the club of Manchester United. Because there is no way you tell me that you are going to come in here and really tell the manager <coughs> you know <coughs> that you are going to be leading everything and that is my manager you know he's reluctant to cede power to Ineos when it comes to transfers because Eric Ten Hag knows exactly what it means to obviously give them power you know 
they will really misfire the project. And Eric Ten Hag is like, there are those players I have into the academy that I believe that are going to be coming into the team of Manchester United later. He knows that very well. And he knows those that he needs to bring in through. And he's like, I'm going to really take control of this. Though, we'll be having what we call a dialogue. And if you are to convince me not to get in the player you want, you need to obviously sit me down and give me better uh, conditions or better reasons than those of mine. So, Eric Ten Hag has what is known as the practical intelligence or the NEOs has come out, obviously state it outright that he's not going to really dance to these guys. And again, there is another condition as we're going to hit to put out to see to it that they really keep this man, you know, for him to put pen to paper, he's telling them Ten Hag wants Manchester United to hand Ben McCarthy a contract extension. He wants it. He wants it. And that shows you that Eric Ten Hag is in control. And whoever thought that Ten Hag is not in control, then you are yet to understand that the Dutch manager is totally in control. Because if you're not in control, you cannot really make all those uh, all those um, all those recommendations. Meaning that the contract situation of Eric Ten Hag has lots of things that Ineos has to obviously dance to. And if at all they don't want, Eric Ten Hag is like, you can suck me. You can suck me. And Ineos is in a position of weakness because Eric Ten Hag now knows that the fans are behind him. And whatever he has wanted to obviously get, you know, he's going to get it. And it's the time to obviously tell them that this is what I want. And we're going to be working as follows. You understand? So the fan power has overpowered the player power and that's how we want man united to be because we the fans nowadays also have our lenses that can really go far and really telescope and get the best for this team you go i'm here right now everyone for for everyone who wanted eric ten hang out is gonna be here next season and he'll be like rokani and team eric, eric ten hang out you really see ahead and you're really wise because this manager is really great but i don't rule out that he might really have a bad season and he might get sucked you get but i think that occupies a three percent and i believe a 97 percent chance shows or indicates that eric ten Hag is really gonna be having a very good season at the club of manchester united because he is really a man who knows what to do and he showed us towards the end of the season that when he's having all his players back, he obviously gets himself into a better position. Now, the Athletic, I've gone ahead to say that the events of really deciding on who becomes the manager of Manchester United started in Monaco on Tuesday, May 14th. It was there. It was there that club executives, including Bresfold, White and Wilcox, gathered to discuss, right? That day, the consensus was that Eric Ten Hag would be relieved of his duties. You understand? And you remember very well that it was around that time that we really started getting in stories that Eric Ten Hag is going to be sucked. Right? That Eric Ten Hag is going to be sucked. And I was like, what a fuck? You know? And it came in that one. I was like, these people aren't really serious. Do they know what they're doing? You get? They never knew what they're doing. So, and they added to say that this decision, this decision was not final, but there were tensions over working methods and the vision for the future. Ten Hag's veto went against Ineos' wishes, and he also wanted to be involved in the medical department as any manager. And that's what a competent manager has to do. You have to get involved into the medical department because they need to explain to you why players are really having those injuries and you need to obviously come in through and really give them a reason so eric ten Hag wanted a lot of things and he never wanted to be what we call a yes manager like many of the people like um dan ashworth really thought and dan ashworth has tested the bitterness of his medicine because this is Manchester United. It's not Brighton. It's not West Brom. It's not West Bromwich Albion. It's not Newcastle. You know, 
where the fans are gonna be your puppets at Man United. We've gonna hate to fight that for a very long time and finally it's getting to the fans and we are dictating the flow of the club and we all know that Ineos are doing a good job but they've gonna hate obviously fault into what we call the time frame of the transfer and on making a decision. So for me I'm really excited on the terms that Eric Ten Hag is gonna hate to say it and I'm just here waiting to see how things are really gonna be panning out into the end of the remaining one or two days to see to it that Ten Hag agrees the contract and then puts pen to paper. So guys, I call upon for your reactions into the comment section below about Eric Ten Hag set staff conditions to Ineos for the new contract that I'm going to hit offer him. There are things he wants as a manager. Do you think he's right to make for to make that call or those calls? May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.